So this will be part 45, I think, of our complete application in, in Spring Boot. And we are going to be talking about validation. So there are about seven of them I've listed here. Actually, it gets more complicated, but I've listed the seven important ones. I don't want to make it complicated. And I've also put in brackets how to achieve it very, very easily. So I'm going to be explaining it with examples. For now, let me log into the application. Again, you have this application, the step-by-step, -step, you can go to start from the first lesson. You can see the link in the description box. So let's start with the required field validation. So if I go to, um, for instance, if I go to globals and go to uh, countries, for example, and I go to add new and I click on save, you, you find out that it saves an empty country. This doesn't make sense at all. You should not allow anyone to enter anything like this. So want to make the description may be required so that the person have to enter something and the details may also be required. So to do that, you simply add required to, to the, to the input uh, attribute. So for instance, if I go to countries at this point, so this is a country uh, form. So at this point, I can simply say the description is required. Simply add it here, required. And the same thing, you can also say the code is required. The code is required as well. Okay, so this is the add model for country and I think uh, we are good to go. So I'm gonna just save. So if I run it, you can see that if I don't enter anything in those boxes, it's going to actually uh, not save. So while it's starting up, let's just go to check the next one. The next one is email. Simply say type is equal to email. So we're not going to be talking much about that. So let's go back now. If I go to add new, sorry, I'm going to refresh this page at this point so that uh, because we've just re relaunched the application. So if I go to add new and I click on save, you see it doesn't work. Even if I enter something in this place, and here I leave it empty and try to save, it doesn't work as well. So there is a required field validation and this makes much sense because uh, you don't want someone to enter empty something empty like this. So I'm going to just delete it. All right. So email validation simply say type is equal to email. So basically if I go to employee and go to, for instance, I go to, let's say edit and this email you should not allow anyone to do something like this. That doesn't make sense. So if I go back to the employee, this place, I can simply go to make the email to be, uh, to validate for email. And to do that, you simply say type is equal to email. So if I scroll down to, uh, to the email, so I already added it, type is equal to email. So basically, if I go back now, try to edit and I enter something that is not an email, you can see that it doesn't work, as you can see right here. Okay, so let's go to where it gets a bit interesting. Again, I'd like to remind you to subscribe to my channel if you've not subscribed, so that you don't miss an update. Now, the next one says number validation. In that case, it's also very easy. Just say type is equal to number. Um, where do we use number? I can't remember, but in case you want to validate for number, simply say type is equal to number. Now let's go to where it is a bit interesting. Let's go back to the countries. Now, if I go to add new at this point, we want the country codes to be maybe uh, only text, no numbers, only text. Um, to do that, even if you say type is equal to text, it will also accept numbers. For instance, if I, for instance, if I enter this number here and I enter some letter here, it's going to, it's going to work. But we actually don't want these uh, numbers to be here. We only want test. Meanwhile, we said type is equal to test and test, uh, these numbers like this correspond to test. So how do you do it? You use regular expressions. I have a complete lesson on regular expression. You can find the link in the description box of this video. But for now, I'm teaching you the basic regular expression from four here to seven. We are actually from four to six. We are using a regular expression. So regular expression is a pattern that matches an entry in a component in a form. So in this case, we have enclosed in square brackets, A to Z, A to Z. It means any, anything that is entered must be a letter from A to Z, uppercase, 
or A to Z lowercase, or even mix. So what it's saying is that user must enter, whatever the user must enter must come to come from this range A to Z, A to Z. Anything he enters outside this range, maybe a number, maybe a symbol, or uh, whatever, a special character is not going to work. So let's try it at this point and see. So what we are going to prevent, we are going to prevent any user from entering 2355 or any number in the code section. Actually, this is a mistake. It should be code or something. So if I go back to the countries, uh, let's go back to countries. There is a country. And at this point, I'm going to code. So code is required. So we are going to leave required right there. And now we are going to say pattern. We are going to say pattern. Pattern is equal to is equal to specifying in, in, in double quotes and in square brackets A to Z, A to Z. So it means that anything outside uh, alphabet, whether uppercase or lowercase, uh, is not going to work. So anything the user enters must be from A to Z or A to Z. So if I run this code again, I'm going to go back to country and try to enter a number and you can see that it doesn't work. Even if a number comes in between, like you say 25A or A25, it will not work as well. So let's go and try it out and let's see how it goes. So at this point, I'm going to just refresh this page. I'm going to refresh this page, uh, relog in again, and let's try to enter a new item. Uh, of course, the required field is still there. You can add, actually add many uh, different validation elements in your control. So let's just choose something, whatever it is. So we are just uh, doing a demo. For you, take some time to make it right, to do it correctly. Now, if I choose this, you can see that it doesn't work. It says, please match the requested format. Even if I say 25A, because I think here should be details, uh, you see, it doesn't work as well because it doesn't expect a number at this point, all right? So if I enter the correct thing, let's say JPN, you can see at this point it's going to, okay, so have A to Z, A to Z. Let's see, I think we mixed up something. Please match the format. So, okay. So I think I mixed up something. So let's just say. So pattern is equal to A to Z, A to Z. Uh, it should actually work. So let's see. J P N. Let's see. Let me let me try to figure out where the problem is coming from. Um. So required and pattern is equal to type is equal to test and pattern is equal to A to Z, A to Z. Um, let's get back there and see. Uh, so we have this code requested format, so it should be correct. Okay, so I think I understand where the problem is coming from. So let's let me explain to you. So meanwhile, um, just give me a second. Let me just try. Let me just check something. Save. Okay, good. So what is expected at this point? I need to I need to provide the range. Okay, so if I want it to be unlimited, to be uh, one or more, I can actually use a plus sign. I actually never wanted to get into this confusion. So you actually should put a plus sign, meaning one or more, all right? So, um, so but at this point, I'm going to run it. So plus sign means one or more of these characters. That is what it means. So that's an aspect of regular expression. I'm going to run it. So let me just uh, make sure everything is okay. So plus sign means one or more but it should come from here. So I, I don't know because in real regu in regular expression, you actually, if you don't specify anything, I think it should work, but I can't remember. So plus sign means one or more. So I'm going to just refresh the page at this point and log in back and go back to new, uh, choose something else. And at this point, if I say, uh, let's just use the same one that we had issues with. 
and I say JPN it should work because I now specify it should be one or more and that is the plus sign okay the the multiplication sign means zero or more okay that is fine I hope you understand it let's move on to the next one now you want it to be a particular length only three characters should be accepted so in that case uh, instead of using the plus sign the plus sign means from one to infinity or one to the maximum number of characters you now specify three so when you specify three like this it says only three characters will be accepted so in that case if i go back we want a code of three characters so i'm going to just come here and uh and close in colib in colib braces let's find colib braces on my keyboard okay i got it now i enclose in colib braces at this point uh three characters that is what we want the country code to be we want it to be only three characters so i'm going to run it now anything outside three characters it actually will not work so at this point i'm going to just correct this and put the plus sign here right so take note of it put the plus sign there and if i come back here and refresh the page and so uh, it's starting up okay so logging back and uh this time i'm going to just enter and i enter let's say to, uh, whatever let's say i enter a whole lot of things you see it doesn't work but if i enter three characters uh it's going to actually work because three characters is specified at this point as you can see now you want it to be between three and ten it should be not less than three and not more than ten in that case you use a range of uh characters in colib braces after the format specifier for the characters you use a range of items separated by comma this time from minimum of three and maximum of ten so i'll recommend you try this out yourself in case of date it's very easy simply use a uh, date validation type is equal to date once you say type is equal to date then the user will not be able to enter uh, uh, a number any other thing it has to be in a date format but before I, I continue let me just show you something about the number formats so i'm going to just say um let me take out this for now and i'm going to simply say type is equal to number i want to show you something so when you say type is equal to number it's going to give you a control called up down that up down control means that you can actually click the mouse uh in and uh, click the up down either you increase the number or you decrease the number and that is called up down and that is very important and besides it allow you to enter additional items in the control so at this point if i refresh the page if i refresh the page uh we should be able to have an up down control uh in that case so if i go if i go here you can see the up down control you can see here if i if i'm clicking the arrow pointing upwards it is increasing the numbers if i i'm going down uh is decreasing it up to zero and it goes minus and stuff like that okay hope you understand this and the next one is uh date as i mentioned just say type is equal to date i'm going to stop here for now if you want look at my complete lesson on regular expression is very very clear and also if you are joining for the first time subscribe if you are following this tutorial you have challenges please let me know i'm going to help you i remain kind on the tech pro and i'm always there for you